Not that. The president. We resume the motion debate we started yesterday. Mr. Yu Pak Lang. Thank you. Mr. President. Mr. President, it is necessary for us to learn about our nation's history, geography, and culture. When I was in secondary school, Chinese history was a compulsory subject. But starting in year 2000, Chinese history has been subsumed under other subjects instead of being a compulsory subject in junior secondary level. And then in 2018, heeding the views of the education sector, the government decided to establish Chinese history as a compulsory subject at junior secondary level. And yet for secondary, uh, senior secondary level, after we started DSE exam, only uh, very few peop uh, students took Chinese history as an elective subject. Only 5,938 or 12% of students took this subject in the DSE exam. It's a worrying trend. Professor Lao Chi Pang has moved a motion amended by Reverend Canon Peter Kuhn on making Chinese history a compulsory subject at senior secondary level is a concern uh, of all members. I fully support learning of Chinese history. As a member of the sector, I also believe we should make good use of the cultural heritage in Hong Kong to showcase traditional Chinese culture, and we should collaborate with my sector so that outside the classroom, we can make the learning of Chinese history an enjoyable experience for our students. And I have three suggestions. First, visits. Mainland visits is an effective way of uh, encouraging the learning of Chinese history. Um, but such tours have been put on hold for a number of years because of COVID and because of black uh, clad um, violence. Gre uh, recently, the government has decided to resume exchange tours. And yet, our industry is engaged in the sense that uh, we provide uh, tours, but in fact, we can have further collaboration to roll out more quality uh, tourism products. In the, news, um, in the newspaper article I wrote today, I also suggested uh, collaborating with the education sector. Second, there are a number of LCSD uh, museums suitable for the promotion of Chinese history. I attended the Dunhua exhibition last year. It was uh, amazing. And I also attended the Coastal Defense Museum. I think that uh, students should go and have a look. And there are also the um, Cultural Heritage Museum in Pak Tam Chong and also the Hong Kong Palace Museum. These museums. are great for the promotion of Chinese history. And I think this is also something we can leverage on in promoting Chinese history for students. Third point, we have 1,500 graded um, uh, historical monuments in Hong Kong, but because of inadequacies in the system, we're unable to improve uh, conservation in Hong Kong. For example, there is an observation tower in Mahu Sound. It was it served as an observation deck in the Qing Dynasty. It has a very unique design, but despite its uniqueness, the government only uh, hoarded it up without uh, taking forward conservation of the relics. Although this does not fall under the purview of the Secretary for Education, the government should make good use of the uh, the resources we have to enhance or uh, cultivate in 
secondary students' interest in Chinese history, Dr. Lai Kwok. Mr. President, first of all, I thank Professor Lao Chi Peng for moving the motion and Reverend Peter Kuhn for moving the amendment. The merit of learning Chinese history is that from past experience, when we learn more about historical events, we can have a better idea of uh, the era we're in. For example, when we learn history, we will have a better idea of the fact that Hong Kong has always been part of China, and it was, um, and Hong Kong had been occupied by the British uh, government since 19, uh, since 1840, and then uh, in December 1984, the Sino-British Joint Declaration was signed for the resumption of sovereignty over Hong Kong by uh, mainland China, and in light of the historical events and the and and the uh, actual circumstances, the mainland government uh, decided to establish a Hong Kong special administrative region according to Article 3 of the Constitution. And that basic law, the basic law would, would be implemented to ensure uh, that this would be successful. And if students have a clear idea of the history of Hong Kong, they would be able to discern fake uh, news. I have strong feelings uh, about this. I studied in a technical school back then, and I learned Chinese history all through for, um, for the five forms of secondary schools, I also attained good results. For Form 1 Chinese history, we learned about the uh, Xia Shang Zhou, the three dynasties, and then we uh, learned about the um, and followed the uh, different dynasties in sequence. And then in the upper senior, uh, in senior secondary levels, we turned to modern Chinese history. Students had a very clear idea about the different dynasties in ancient China. And the design of the curriculum was such that it tallied with the development of students. As for Chinese language subject, it also echoed with uh, the Chinese history um, curriculum. For example, I remembered a class, a piece of classic um, literature that described uh, the war between Qin and Jin states, and students had a better uh, had a good idea of uh, the history of the warring states in ancient China. Learning Chinese history is not about learning by rote. Instead, students should be able to flexibly um, make use of what they've learned. And that means, for example, seminars and inter-school quizzes, social resources should also be put to good use. For example, uh, visits can be arranged to the Hong Kong Palace Museum, and even games can be deployed to make the learning experience more enjoyable. The BPA and myself support encouraging uh, more students to learn about Chinese history and culture. In the school year 2018-2019, the Education Bureau decided to make Chinese history a compulsory subject at the junior secondary level. But as for senior secondary level, there are a number of factors to be considered. For example, if Chinese history is an independent compulsory subject at senior secondary level, uh, this may deprive students of uh, other electives. And there are questions on whether the uh, there are sufficient resources, such as teachers, uh, etc., to cope with the change, and whether the learning goals can be met. I think this discussion aims at uh, sparking concern on uh, this topic. Mr. Chen Chen Ying, President, well, our uh, state is uh, in 
some total of its history, geography, culture, political system, etc. So um, in school education, uh, through the media, and also uh, we should uh, teach our children about the country when they are young so that they develop a sense of national identity. Uh, before the handover under the colonial education system, people in general did not have a good understanding of the country. They had a very um, um, limited sense of national identity. And since uh, the handover, uh, we are um, promoting people's understanding. And I think uh, there is still a lack there's still lack a sense of uh, national identity among our people. I'm grateful to Professor Lau's motion on making Chinese history a compulsory subject at senior education level. Well, uh, it, uh, the um, teaching of Chinese history started uh, in the Qing Dynasty. Now, uh, in the mainland, they have uh, the education ministry responsible for uh, the compiling the curriculum for Chinese history. From uh, S1 to S3, they learn about Chinese history, and then senior and three further on, uh, they um, take world history. And then uh, further on, uh, history is an elective subject. Uh, soon after the handover, Chinese history was not a compulsory subject. There might be one or two lessons per week. It was not until uh, 2001 that um, Chinese history has been made a compulsory subject. But some schools did not teach it as a separate independent subject. It was not until 2018-19 that uh, Chinese history was made an independent compulsory subject in junior secondary level. However, because of the um, short time of implementation, the effect has yet to be seen. Now, for most uh, textbooks, uh, they are um, compiled by publishers under the guide for the curriculum. And then after vetting, they can be uh, listed in the list of approved textbooks, and schools are free to choose uh, textbooks they prefer. And uh, schools can also uh, are encouraged uh, to choose different types of textbooks and look at historical events from a particular historical perspective. However, when it comes to the use of uh, teaching materials, I think um, there are differences among schools, and uh, viewpoints and perspectives and narratives may not be the same. Can we effectively uh, cultivate a sense of uh, belonging and uh, national identity for our students? Uh, the result is questionable. It was found that some of uh, the approved textbooks distorted history. Some did not go through vetting by the EDB. Now, we can adopt a multifaceted and integrated approach in teaching history, and our children can also learn from outside school. However, the narratives in textbooks should be standardized. I think there is a lot of room for improvement and review when it comes to our textbooks. If we can improve uh, the um, uh, the compilation of um, teaching resources and the vetting mechanism, it will help uh, as regards uh, enhancing our students' understanding in Chinese history, geography, and culture. The government should review the current curriculum so that students can learn Chinese history throughout secondary education. As regards whether it should be made a compulsory subject, I have reservation. I support. Reverend Kuhn's amendment. Mr. Louis Leung. Thank you, President. China's history is always an elective subject in senior secondary education. In July last year, there was a paper from EDB to the education panel. While we have uh, seen a reduction in student population. Among the 20 elective subjects, Chinese history ranks seventh in terms of uh, popularity. Well, but what does that mean? In between 2001 and 2020, according to statistics from the uh, Examination Authority, uh, during the 10-year period, 2001-2020, 
there were on average 77,000 candidates in the HKDSE exam, and 23 of them took Chinese history, accounting for 30% of the total student population. However, since the introduction of a new education structure, uh, the f in the first DSE exam, there were 70,000 candidates, but less than 12% or 8,300 took Chinese exam uh, Chinese history examination. The number dropped to 41,000 in 2021, about 30%. In fact, uh, there was less than 5,600 students who took Chinese history. So on average, only one out of every eight students took Chinese history. No wonder the um, understanding of Chinese history among our younger generation is um, inadequate. I encourage students to develop a sense of national identity and affection for the country through learning Chinese history. However, I think we should uh, adopt a soft approach. Making Chinese history a compulsory subject at senior secondary level warrants a further study, and the government has to do the following three things. First, uh, it must uh, discuss with stakeholders in education in fine-tuning the current senior secondary curriculum. In particular, there must be suitable adju adjustment in the teaching in the lesson hours of the four core subjects so that while Chinese history becomes a compulsory subject, there will still be enough time for students to take two to three electives. Secondly, we must uh, plan the teaching manpower demand and provide sufficient training ahead so that there will be sufficient qualified Chinese uh, history teacher to teach the subject. And third, we must consider the needs of non-Chinese speaking students. While the number of population is falling, we've seen a continuous increase in the number of uh, NSC students. In 2021-22, we had over 10,200 non-Chinese speaking students up nine years compared with the past. I'm sure um, teaching Chinese history will help non-Chinese speaking students to integrate in society. However, because of the language gap and cultural gap, they may face more challenge in learning Chinese history. So the government should provide targeted support measures for non-Chinese speaking students as early as possible. Chinese history is about stories of uh, the Chinese nation. The level of um, uh, of interest that would depend on whether schools and uh, society have uh, deployed enough resources to create a favorable learning environment. Thank you. Mr. Stanley Ng. President, Reverend Peter Goon's amendment has totally distorted Professor Lau's original motion. Now, in yesterday and today's debate, most members mentioned that uh, the um, motion is not really realistic because we don't have sufficient qualified teachers and then we're not able to adjust the curriculum and the pressure on students is high. And therefore, it is difficult to implement the proposal in the original motion. However, we do agree that we should enhance our young people and students' history knowledge so that they have a sense of national identity. So um, we want very much to support both the original motion and the amendment. We're not here just uh, to show our position or stance. We really want the motion to be implemented. Our young people need to see their knowledge about the country greatly boosted so as to enhance their sense of national pride and identity and affection.
So the most important thing in this debate is through learning Chinese history, our students should enhance and confirm their awareness in the following three areas. First, the Chinese culture is the only culture that has lasted for thousands of years. And secondly, the Chinese nation is a grand nation. We used to be the most advanced and uh, civilized nation in the world. We must strengthen this confidence in history and in our own identity. We have to firmly believe that the Chinese nation was, is, and still will be a great nation. Thirdly, Western uh, history and culture, however, is questionable. Their ancient history, including uh, ancient Roman and Ro ancient Greek history, were mainly myths. Their contemporary history is all about uh, aggression, invasion, and wars, and they are extremely n evil using modern standard. And Chinese culture and nation have almost uh, become extinct because of foreign invasion. The establishment of new China has um, allowed Chinese people to stand on their feet once again. So the fifth point is all Chinese people, our students in particular, have an important mission, and that is to promote and realize the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation to cultivate this awareness, we can deploy various ways and means. It's not confined to textbooks, through uh, martial arts novels and dramas and movies, we can do the same. So the EDB doesn't have uh, to feel difficult. We can use various ways and means to achieve the five points I've just outlined, and we can use a multifaceted approach. We want to have substance in our targets. We don't want to chant just empty slogans. I so I submit, President. Mr. Tan Yuehang, or Dr. Tan Yuehang, thank you, President. President, nurturing a sense of belonging and national identity among students is the target of primary and secondary education. It is also the duties of teachers. For national, for national education, the focus is on Chinese history. We have to build a sense of interest among students for Chinese history, so we should start educating students Chinese history since a young age, from junior secondary to senior secondary to university level where we, con where we consolidate their historical knowledge and teach them critical thinking so that they can learn from the past, collate experience from our history, and reflect on how we should deal with the present issues. And also this can help students build um, understanding concerning the present international circumstances. Now, if we stop at the junior secondary level, the education on Chinese history may be may not be deep enough. There will not be in-depth understanding of our history. If we don't make sure that students continue to consolidate and deepen the knowledge on Chinese history, we cannot establish a, syst a system of critical thinking, and it is unfavorable for the promotion of national education. So I think it is necessary to make sure that senior, senior 
secondary students are being arranged with Chinese history lessons and activities, as well as national developments. With the present situation where we are promoting national security education, we have to make sure that students have better understanding in terms of our country's system, culture, and history. Now, there are several suggestions I would like to make. First, senior secondary Chinese history education must be accompanied with training for teachers. There must be a diversified curriculum to enhance students' capability to learn Chinese history. Rather than rote learning, we should focus on preparing teaching materials which can nurture an interest and passion among students for Chinese history. There should be organic integration between lessons and extracurricular activities. There should be lively learning. Students can watch documentaries, novels to learn. Now, homework can include writing um, students' thoughts after reading the books or visiting museums. Thematic studies or thematic reports should be used as, a, as an assessment mechanism rather than using traditional ex examination paper to assess students' uh, results. This will not add to the stress of the students. Thirdly, Chinese history should have interplay with chi the Chinese language studies and other subjects. Chinese history, culture, and also our national developments are closely related. The design of citizenship and social developments and also Chinese history's subjects for senior secondary students should be enriched. For example, in Chinese history, we can include elements of um, chemistry and also poetry, re, uh, recital, and other activities to make it more interesting. All in all, we have to ensure that there are collaborations with other subjects to make sure that students are interested. Now, this is the key to nurture a national sense of national identity among students. I think it is necessary to ensure that Chinese history is taught to students without affecting the, um, the general curriculum. The syllabus should be enriched, and also the interest and also capabilities of teachers and students to teach and learn Chinese history should be enhanced. Now, with a good education in Chinese history, um, students will be armed with um, the right ideology and uh, initiatives. Thank you. Mr. Gary Chen. President, thank you. President Xi has said that we should allow our young people to learn more about Chinese history, that one country is the root of two systems. Hong Kong people should have the fundamental knowledge on the history of our people and our, our nation. The, easy, the simplest way is to incorporate Chinese history into our education system. Now, the discussion has um, took a turn from whether we should do it to how we should do it. Now, if you tell students that they have to learn history, they might think it is boring, that they have to memorize many stuff. So many, many students are reluctant to learn history. The point is how we can educate, how we can teach history in um, a lively manner. Now, history is more than stuff on textbook. We have to go beyond our schools. There is the need to nurture a sense of passion and interest for history and our country in society as a whole. Without this atmosphere, it would hinder our efforts to teach and learn Chinese history. Unlike other subjects, People may think that Chinese history is not useful in terms of find, helping students find a job. However, Chinese history can help young people to embrace their people and country. They will be more responsible to the country, and they will, it will make their life more meaningful. Chinese history 
can help us understand our mission as a Chinese. We can understand the history and the developments of our nation accurately as a Chinese. Now, to learn Chinese history, we shouldn't just rely on textbook and examination. It is necessary for teachers to impart um, the knowledge accurately. Now, persons and um, manpower and um, stories are the software of teaching Chinese history. I'm not just talking about teachers in schools. Anyone who is passionate and who can help others to love the country and Hong Kong are potential teachers. There are a lot of stories with which we can teach young people with. In Hong Kong, there are several um, monuments celebrating the, um, the martyrs uh, fighting the Japanese, and also there are monuments um, mem um, in remembrance of the Wu Jiaoteng uh, warriors. Our warriors fought bravely against the Japanese aggressors. They were passionate in saving the country, and they were eager to see their country thrive. The country, our nation, back in the days of our ancestors, was weak. Aggressors could take whatever they want from our country. The people was not protected, not to mention to thrive and to prosper. Now, sense of gain and also prosperity were only dreams to our ancestors back then. It was only after all those struggles that we are where we are. Now, with the sacrifice made by our old warriors, our country has stood up and prospered. These are everyday stories which we can tell our young people with. If we can use stories around us to teach young people Chinese history, it will make the subject much more interesting. And we'll be able to reach into the hearts of our young people. Thank you. Members. The motion debates on making Chinese history a compulsory subject at senior secondary level. I will invite Professor Lao Ji Pang to speak on the amendments at 10.15 a.m. Mr. Benson, look. Thank you, President. President, I thank Professor Lao Ji Pang for moving his motion and also for Reverend Kuhn for moving the amendment so that we can have a debate on the positioning of Chinese history as a subject at senior secondary level. I think everyone here is a patriot. We all agree that we should deepen our learning in Chinese history, and we should also understand China's um, contemporary history better. We have to learn about how the Chinese Communist Party led the Chinese people on the path to prosperity. Now. By, educate, by implementing senior secondary Chinese history education, we can enhance sense of belonging to our country among students and also the sense of national identity. In the 20th National Party Congress, National um, Congress report, President Xi said we have to speed up constructing a system where Chinese people can tell our stories and broadcast our voice. So that should be a multi-pathway approach to let the world understand the origin and history of the Chinese people and equip our young people to tell stories of China and Hong Kong. According to the Curriculum Development Council's survey, conducted last year. In year 2021, there were 6,970 Form 4 students studying Chinese history, 
some 14.3% of the total number. It is a low percentage. There is a need to enhance the interest and um, motivations for senior secondary students to learn Chinese history. And we have to help frontline teachers to do their jobs more properly. I agree that we have to use a multi-pathway approach to teach students according to their capabilities. We should offer them with a comprehensive education experience, learning experience, and also for them to make use of the, um, what they have learned. Now, after the um, reform, the total lesson hours would be dialed down by 50%. The point is to allow more flexibility and leisure time for students. And also, we have greatly enhanced our focus on STEAM education. So from the perspective of lesson time, concerning today's motion's focus, we should discuss it with the frontline teachers and understand what the real situation is. If we are to have teachers dedicated to teaching Chinese history as a compulsory subject, then we'll have to be much more resources and much more teaching manpower. If we look at the situation right now, the manpower and resources situation is very tense. And we don't want to add more stress to the teaching staff. To enhance the, to, to, uh, enhance the passion of students to learn Chinese history, I think the multi-pathway approach is, will be useful. Based on students' learning needs, teachers can organize activities beyond classroom to educate students on Chinese history and nurture their interests. There can be more study tours with Chinese history as the theme. We can visit monuments, different places in the country, and also historical and cultural museums. In Hong Kong, we also have um, the Palace Museum and other museums. In my university days, I took, I uh, participated in an immersive course in the Shuzhou University. I learned at uh, Chu. I also had to learn to sing um, the Qin opera. Now, history is like a mirror. We can understand how the world is turning by looking at our history, and we can reflect on ourselves. We have to understand the, the uh, powers of history and learn from our nation's wisdom in the past so as to develop a better and more comprehensive view on the world. Thank you. Mr. Lan Hong Kwok. Thank you, Mr. President. It is the duty of every citizen to learn about the the history of the once nation and every student in every country will be arranged to learn about the country's history and culture. This is no exception for our country. As President Xi said, we should attach importance to history when we should learn from history. We have 5,000 years of civilization in ancient in China, and this is a good tradition for us. For Hong Kong students, they should also embrace history. In 2001, the Curriculum Development Council pushed forward um, the education reform, and the government then made a very peculiar decision. Chinese history was made a compulsory subject at junior secondary level. At the same time, however, school-based management would be adopted for schools to decide whether Chinese history should be made an independent subject. For some schools, in the end, they did not make Chinese history an, a compulsory subject. Either Chinese history was subsumed under history lessons or as part of the humanities education. In the end, the learning of Chinese history became fragmented, and under such circumstances, students had no alternative but to follow this fragmented approach, and they did not have the correct understanding of our country and our nation. Five years ago, fortunately, the government 
corrected itself and decided to set Chinese history as an independent compulsory subject at a junior secondary level. And this year, it, it's further extended to cover Form 3. That's the right start, but what is the next step for us? Some may say that um, there are insufficient lesson time to study Chinese history for just Form 1 to Form 3 at junior secondary level. There are so many dynasties in ancient China to cover. Under the existing system, at junior secondary level, Chinese history is a compulsory subject. And the lessons are so crammed as a student will need to study uh, from from the three ancient dynasties to modern China. In fact, the president of Hong Kong Polytechnic University also expressed a similar view as I read in a, an article yesterday. Not enough importance has been attached to Chinese history at secondary level. Chinese history has now become a core element for um, the university students. And all students are required to take this module. First, we need to review the effectiveness of uh, making Chinese history a compulsory independent subject at junior, senior, uh, junior secondary level. Because this is the first cohort of Form 3 students taking Chinese history as a compulsory subject this year. And we haven't finished the three-year cohort cycle. The citizenship and social development subject has just been implemented. And if we make, compul uh, make it compulsory for senior secondary students to learn Chinese history as well, we may be uh, rushing ourselves. Now, Mr. President, I think instead of second, uh, apart from secondary students, we should also make primary students learn Chinese history as an early stage, starting from the easier elements. For example, we can include uh, geography and culture of China as well. So as to help students learn historical events and um, reflect on the present situation and learn more about the country as nationals. Dr. David Lam. Well, uh, a national, sh uh, especially those with education attainment, should always learn about one's nation at least some basic knowledge of one's nation so that there is respect for the nation. Otherwise, uh, one, will only, uh, one cannot call oneself having knowledge of one's uh, nation. And only when nationals know about the history of one's na uh, nation will there be a future for the nation. I just quoted from Professor Tian Lu, who wrote the foreword for his book about Chinese history. I think it's very clear that one should always learn about the nation's history. As far as uh, students are concerned, we need to have a time frame, we need to have uh, a scope of study, and we need to uh, take it forward thoroughly. For example, uh, where were Qin, Yi, Zhao states? And when we studied history, uh, we found it very difficult to uh, remember, for example, the different um, historical events throughout time because uh, there were different periods applicable to different dynasties, like uh, Jia Qing. If we don't have a thorough understanding of these points, we won't be able to uh, have a be better grasp of uh, history. That is why uh, we used a calendar, AD one. 
uh, to mark the different the uh, year and dates of different events, all the way to one nine uh, nineteen eleven nineteen forty nine. And I just cited uh, the years when the states and the capital of states uh, moved places all the way to the establishment of the um, Communist Party of China, etc. These are the important dates students should remember. It's like a telephone directory. Only when students learn by heart will they know the exactly when some, some historical events happened. For Northeast China, after the September 18th incident, the um, Japan set up a colonial government in um, Manchuria, and that's where they started to invade China. But as said, uh, it has always been part of China, and that's about China's territory. As for thorough understanding, I remember when I was a student, I was told by my teacher that Hong Kong became the pearl of the Orient. It started with uh, it started as a fishing village, and then, according to my teacher, Tun Tun Mun um, had been a, a place with uh, troops, military troops. Uh, it was a military base, and according to the classical uh, saying there was a mentioning of this Ling Ding Yang in Song at the end of the of Song Dynasty Wen Tian Xiang was taken to hostage and he was asked to go to Ling Ding Yang to act as a lobbyist and Long Tan was a place when the emperor of Song Dynasty um, scurried off to. So that's these are the important places. That is why, in order to make students learn Chinese history well, we must support what Reverend Kun said. Mr. Yim Kong, Mr. President, first of all, I thank Professor Lao Chi Ping for moving the motion and the Reverend Kuhn for moving amendment. In order to attach great greater importance to the learning of Chinese history, we must be aware of the fact that there's been 25 years of uh, chi uh, Hong Kong's reunification with the mainland China. And we had the uh, black clad uh, violence, uh, etc. And uh, we must work harder to unite our people so that we can actively integrate into the country's development. In early December t last year, in a survey about the sense of belonging uh, to the country, uh, we rated 81.8% um, as we identified um, ourselves as Hong Kongers. But for a sense of belonging to the country, just 9.2 to 7.7 7, uh, marks or percent. And that uh, that explains the, uh, dif the difference in the sense of identity as Hong Kongers as, and as part of Chinese national. So it has to do with uh, the sense of national identity. And our education system has been such that we are not uh, doing our best to remove the ideas implanted by the colonial government. And Chinese history at the moment is not a compulsory subject. There are only 240 hours of lesson time available. So we must let the new generation of youth have a better idea of uh, Chinese history and be better integrated into the country's development. I have the suggestion we should um, take gradual steps to make Chinese history compulsory subject so that 
um, students can know more about the country's development, the abundant resources available. There are also a number of suggestions. The Education Bureau, first of all, can consider uh, collaborating with the Ministry of Education of our country so as to draw up um, the Chinese history curriculum and teaching materials that can inspire students' interest. For example, uh, there is a book called What Happened in Ming Dynasty. And it's written in a way that uh, young people find interesting. And we can also arrange for visits to the mainland to know more about uh, historical monu monuments and relics so that students have the first hand experience about the breadth and depth of Chinese history. In uh, West Kowloon Cultural District, in the long term, uh, museum about the Opium War should be set up so that young people know more about this important aspects uh, of Chinese history that happened in Hong Kong. And we should also arrange for systematic training for Chinese history teachers. Patriotic education should start at a young age. Younger Young people should know more about the development of Mainland China, especially since reform and opening up, so that we can instill in them a sense of national pride um, and a sense of nationhood, so that we can um, make Hong Kong integrate into the country's development plan and cultivate in our people a sense of belonging. This goal is not far, so submit. Mr. Stephen Ho. Thank you, President. First, I want to thank Professor Lau for uh, moving this uh, very wise motion debate. Some members felt that it was difficult to implement the proposal in the motion debate, which is a well-intentioned. Now, when it comes to cultivating affection for the country, our education system has room for improvement, and Chinese history is a subject uh, to achieve the purpose. Now, Professor Lau is uh, proposing that we make it a compulsory subject. Now, even if we pass the motion and the amendment, uh, it would be difficult to implement the proposal in the motion today. Now, we are just uh, expressing our views, even if we make the subject a compulsory one. How teachers teach it is important. Now, if it is a lesson well taught, 10 hours is good enough. But if uh, the teachers are not to doing it properly, then uh, the effect can backfire. For instance, uh, a few years back, we uh, saw a teacher uh, telling students that we uh, had uh, opium war because uh, they wanted to ban cigarettes in Hong Kong. Now, if we do not provide sufficient foundation for the learning of Chinese history, when I was a student, I was taught by my teachers that do not take Chinese history when you grow up because it's not going to help you in your career. It's not going to help you in money, to make money. But then my mentor told me that uh, to um, achieve to have achievements, you must uh, study history. Now, everyone here has a basic or rather a rather uh, considerable knowledge of history because when we know history, we know the global trend, and you can tell uh, the motive behind a move. Now, Mr. Ho, uh, do you have your mobile phone with you? Uh, I don't. And whether we're talking about uh, political parties or legislators or the business sector, from time to time we have training courses in the mainland. We always ask the um, our mainland authorities whether they can uh, give us um, lessons on uh, national uh, history and also uh, the um, national situation. Now, now uh, in the mainland, what happened five years ago uh, would be history, and what happened within the past five years is politics. Dr. David Lam uh, recited poetry to us. I was really touched. Uh, 
Western medical practitioner has a very uh, strong knowledge in Chinese history. Some teachers lack cultivation in Chinese culture, history, and politics. So we may not necessarily need to make Chinese history a compulsory subject, but we should follow the practice of political parties. Uh, for instance, uh, there used to be liberal studies. Perhaps once in a month, we can uh, give students a lecture on the uh, significance of a certain event. For instance, South Korea likes to claim that Chongyang Festival originated from their country and that a certain uh, ocean belongs to them. But in fact, even Japan admitted that they were uh, foreigners. So we have a historical evidence. So when they claimed that uh, Chongyang or Dun or the Dragon Boat Festival originated from them. Now, uh, there was an outcry in the mainland, and when they, um, some people uh, glamorized uh, Qing Hui, and uh, there was a, a strong objection in the mainland, but there was no objection in Hong Kong. Thank you. Mr. Chen Yong. Thank you, President, and I thank Professor Lau, Reverend Kuhn, and the Secretary. Now, this is a very good occasion for us to discuss Chinese history. Chinese history is about one's identity, where I came from and where I stand now. Looking back the uh, 5,000 years of history in our country, now we will cultivate a sense of national identity and national pride. For all leaders of the world, they must know their country's or their nation's history well so that they can achieve, they can be successful easier. On the 1st of July last year, when President Xi visited Hong Kong, in his important address, he started with the 5,000 years of history of the country and also the many long years of development in Huaxia, including Hong Kong. So Hong Kong has been part of the Chinese nation for 5,000 years. And for the Opium Wars, after learning about them, then we will understand uh, the suffering and glamorous history of uh, the nation. And when we look at the uh, rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, well, all historical events can help us to reflect. And they used to say that uh, there were only tigers and uh, turtles in Hong Kong. And during the War of Resistance and Japanese occupation of Hong Kong when there was uh, massacres and also abuse of women and uh, the British Army surrendered very quickly. And for three years and eight months, who drove uh, or resisted the Japanese, mainly the East River Column. So you, if you know about these historical events and stories, then you will know who were there to protect Hong Kong. These stories can be made into movies and can be interesting. You don't have to argue. Such stories are interesting and that will motivate our young people to learn. It's just like an electronic game uh, is very attractive to all young people in the world.
uh, because uh, the content is useful for personal development. So whether or not we make the subject a compulsory one doesn't really matter. But all people in the education sector should think about how we can motivate our young people to learn history so that they can learn lessons from the past. Now we have to tell good stories of Hong Kong because uh, stories can be intriguing and interesting. And uh, stories uh, should be based on historical facts in kindergartens and primary and secondary schools. We should all listen to good stories. Well, when I was uh, on an exchange program in the U.S., I found that uh, their uh, soldiers returned to school to refresh uh, the knowledge on national history on a regular basis. So the details can be further discussed, uh, but we do agree that learning about the history of one's country is essential that will uh, benefit personal development as well as national development. Thank you. Mr. Shu Kafai. Thank you, President. Uh, the motion is moved by Professor Lau, and that is uh, to um, cultivate a sense of belonging to our country and affection for the Chinese people and a sense of national identity. And if uh, Chinese history is a compulsory subject, in senior secondary education that would be useful. Reverend Kuhn has moved an amendment. Can uh, Chinese history cultivate a sense of belonging to our country and uh, national identity and national pride? Well, after the black clap violence in 2019, that color revolution, I think uh, what happened back then uh, was still very vivid in our minds. I have always, how come we have uh, local people objecting uh, the our own community? And the whole campaign was led by young people. I have been communicating with um, young people and also the middle-aged. I uh, would um, try to ascertain uh, their color, so to speak, whether they are blue or yellow. Now, for those who are yellow, so to speak, the knowledge of Chinese history is blank. They did not know what happened to a country in late Qing Dynasty, in uh, early um, in the early Republic sta stage, and they knew nothing about foreign invasion. And uh, they did not know that uh, for some places in the country, Chinese nationals and dogs were banned. They did not know that our people were treated like dogs. And during Japanese invasion, peoples uh, were tied their hands were tied. They could only witness how their family members, including children, were massacred. They had absolutely no knowledge of such things. They did not know what the country had gone through. So what has happened, really? I think it all boils down to the question of education. I was born in Hong Kong. I uh, studied history in uh, primary school and in um, junior secondary. I learned about uh, the Xia Shang Zhou dynasties. And I kept asking myself, how come we were always bullied? The day will come when we no longer be bullied. That was an idea I had even when I was young. So I always want to enrich myself so I can contribute to this course. Now, Mr. Lewis Leung said that recently only 10, only 7 or 1, 
out of eight of um, students uh, had uh, taken Chinese history. So what was in the mind of uh, the um, seven eighth students who did not learn Chinese history? So Professor Lau has this motion to encourage young people to know their nation better. I think we are making progress. Now, my uh, children and um, even uh, relatives, well, even before the national anthem is played at 6 p.m., they uh, will go in front of the TV and be prepared to uh, sing along and to listen to the national anthem. So we should start when children are young. We should not allow them to take away Chinese history from our curriculum. Had we done that, the 2019 black clad violence would not have happened at all. Luckily, we have uh, the national security law for Hong Kong, so I don't think this will happen again. But we should let our students understand that they are Chinese and uh, they should learn about our history and how they can face the future. While we are we face an ever-changing world. We are uh, moving towards the goals for the second centennium. So I think we have a heavy responsibility. Thank you. Mr. Dominic Lee, thank you, President. A sense of belonging and identification with the nation is a very important element for the country's development. Throughout the chaos, we saw that the younger generation and society as a whole lack an identity an identity with the nation so that they did something to harm our country. There is a need to comprehensively deepen our education on the country's history. Now, I thank Professor Lau for moving this motion so that we have a chance to discuss this topic. Now, for societies which have a high level of education, the people would be very um, proud of the history. The history of the country would be a compulsory subject among students. We have seen similar arrangements in Korea, South Korea and Japan and other countries. Now, during the colonial era, maybe they have weakened education on Chinese history to, so that they can govern the city more easily. They have taken away the achievements of the Chinese Communist Party from the Chinese history subjects. They have become taboo. And they focused on political history rather than history of the Chinese people. It really weakened students' sense of national identity. After reunification, we have been increasing our priority on Chinese history. However, it was still rose learning and memorizing focused. As a result, less and less students chose Chinese history as, a, as an elective subject. According to the HKEAA, during the HACE era in 1999, there were only some 30,000 there was 30,000 students choosing Chinese history as a subject. And then um, in 10 years' time, um, it was 10,000 students less. Now, after the reform of the senior secondary education curriculum, last year only 6,098 students chose Chinese history as an elective subject. Now, Chinese history is closely related to national education. For the young generation to learn about a country, they would be more um, patriotic. If Chinese history is an elective subject, it would not be beneficial to nurture a sense of belonging and also national identity among students. Now, if I think making Chinese history a compulsory subject for senior secondary students might be a possible way to go. We can focus more, put more focus on our country's political system, economic development, and also political ide ideologies, and also the development of the CCP and the achievements made after reform and opening up. And also, there can be better interplays between Chinese history, geography, and culture. And also, schools can arrange for mainland study visits and also thematic studies for students and make the lesson more interesting rather than merely 
rose learning. Now, the core subjects, the four core subjects for senior secondary students are Chinese, English, mathematics, and the CS subject. With an additional compulsory subject, it may add to the stress for students. So, Mr. Professor Lao Ji Pang advocated to grade students' performance with attained or unattained. That may be one way to go. We have to strike a balance between alleviating students' learning pressure and ensuring that they learn Chinese history. But I think that we share a consensus. We want to step up historical education for our young people so as to enhance their sense of national identity and sense of belonging. Thank you. I shall submit. Ms. Chen Yunming. Thank you, President. I speak in support of making Chinese history a compulsory subject at senior secondary level. Now, many people have quoted the Tang Dynasty poem that we can use history as a mirror to learn from the past and look to the future. Now, to be a proper Chinese person, people, we have to learn Chinese history, and it is only natural for us to learn Chinese history. Now, history of the country is an essential element in any place education system. It can nurture a sense of national identity among young people. In Hong Kong, however, we spend a lot of time before we can make, make a Chinese history a compulsory subject for junior secondary level. After reunification, it was not made a compulsory subject. In year 2010, the HGSAR government made Chinese history a compulsory subject for junior secondary level, accounting for at least 10% of the total lesson hour. But there was no requirement for dedicated uh, teaching of Chinese history. For some schools, they combine Chinese and the world history in one subject. And sometimes Chinese history would be taught under different humani humanitarian lessons. There is no uni unified uh, standard among schools. In year 2016, in November, in the last um, Legislative Council, there was a motion about making Chinese history a compulsory subject. It shows that after the 25 years after reunification, we still haven't made it a compulsory subject for senior secondary students, and there is not much focus on the development of contemporary China so that students were not taught about the comprehensive development of the country. Now, in, in the policy address 2017, paragraph 132, the government made a promise to make Chinese history a compulsory subject at the junior secondary level. In year 2018 and May, the Education Bureau rolled out the junior secondary curriculum. Now, so we spent 20 hours after reunification in making Chinese history a compulsory subject with dedicated teaching hours at the junior secondary level. According to the most updated curriculum guideline, there are four major goals for junior secondary curriculum Chinese history subjects. First, to educate junior secondary students on the comprehensive um, picture of the Chinese culture and historical figures and events, and also nurturing a an ability to learn history on their own, free, nurture students' own ethics, moral values, and also the sense of responsibility and belonging to the country. Four, nurture interest among students to learn Chinese history. Now, today we're talking about extending the Chinese history as a compulsory subject to senior secondary curriculum. I think if we can do that, there will be more room for the Education Bureau to achieve the, uh, the above goals and the younger generation will be benefited. Now, the re recommendation is that we should free up more hours so that Chinese history can be made a compulsory core subject. I think there's always a way to achieve that. The, the point is we have to plan ahead. Now, we really should learn from our past experience and use history as our as a, as a mirror and a teacher. Now, we have to transition from stability to prosperity, and we have to implement the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong. History is important for these objectives. It is a common consensus among um, people in the society, and it is the only way to 
achieve that. Thank you. Professor Lao Pao, you may now speak on the amendments. Thank you, Pro thank you, President. I thank Reverend Peter Kuhn for moving the amendments to enrich my original motion and make it more three-dimensional. Both Reverend Kuhn and I hope that senior secondary students can understand the country's developments more comprehensively. I agree with his amendment. In his amendments, he mentioned that Chinese history should be made an essential learning experience throughout the entire secondary education. I think it aligned with the spirit of my motion. It is just different words. I agree with this suggestion on how we can implement, implement it in the secondary education uh, level. I think we have to agree with making it an essential learning experience. As a compulsory core subject, senior secondary students will be taught Chinese history for three consecutive years. It will nurture habits to learn Chinese history in them. And it will be more systematic if we make it a compulsory subject. It will be much more effective than just adding Chinese history as an element in other subjects. And it will not it cannot be replaced by tours and visits. As a core subject, the subjects will be taught in a more systematic and effective manner. And we can avoid the uh, previous failings in uh, teachers teaching liberal studies. They imparted different values to students. In his amendments, Reverend Kuhn also suggested to use attained or unattained as a grading system for the subjects. He deleted this sentence in my original motion. Well, let me elaborate on that. Now, Chinese history, geography, and culture as a subject is very useful in terms of cultivating secondary school students, a sense of belonging to our country, and the affection for the Chinese people, and a sense of national identity. I don't want to make it a subject where we grade the learning progress of our students uh, with examinations. That's why I proposed using a grading system of attained or unattained as the, as the grading system. We don't want to use examination or uh, marks as, a, as an initiative or drive for students to learn. So I welcome a grading system of a similar nature in terms of the actual number of lesson hours and the implementation details, I think we will need experiments to improve the design. And also by making Chinese history, geography, and culture and a compulsory subject, it will not impede as students from choosing Chinese history as an elective subject. I think that we should continue to keep Chinese history as an elective subject. Those students who would like to deepen their study in Chinese history should be allowed to do so. I so submit. Thank you. Dr. Junius Ho, a point of order. Thank you, President. I was going to raise this point of order before Professor Lau spoke. Now you set the time at 12, at 10, 15 a.m. There are, three, there are three members left. I don't think it would take too long for all of us to speak. I think you definitely have the power to extend the time a bit so that we can speak. Dr. Junius Ho. The rules of procedure have been amended such that each motion debate must not go beyond four hours. This is in fact stipulated in the rules of procedure. I don't have discretion to allow the three members still in the queue to speak. In fact, if you had arrived here at 9 a.m. and pressed the button to speak, you could have had the chance to speak. So perhaps at the next council meeting, you should arrive earlier. Secretary for Education. Mr. President, once again, I thank Professor Lao Chi Peng for moving today's motion and reference Peter Kuhn for his amendment. I'm also grateful to members who have offered invaluable views. And from what members said, 
I know that there is consensus on the, what the importance is on promoting the education of Chinese uh, history and culture. And in fact, we share the same goal on in cultivating in students a sense of nationhood and national identity, only that the members have different ways uh, of reaching this goal. As mentioned, there are concerns that uh, making Chinese history compulsory subject may have implications. For example, there may be substantial changes to uh, university admission mechanism, teaching resources, the number of teachers, the training resources, the publication of textbooks, and uh, the redesign and arrangements of examination and uh, assessment. And haste makes waste. There is, we need time to make preparation to ensure teaching quality. Uh, we have reservations about the original motion because this is not the right timing uh, to do so and the conditions are not favorable. The Education Bureau has been striving to provide more choices for students and parents so as to achieve the goal of catering for the diversity of st students at the senior secondary level. Making Chinese history a compulsory subject at senior secondary level or scrapping Chinese history as an elective may cause overlapping with the citizenship and social development, and this may pose additional pressure on students and parents. This is definitely not what members would like to see. As for um, the grading system of attained and unattained, this may uh, cause universities to find it difficult to, to, to differentiate capable students and may limit the prospect of students uh, aspiring to further their studies in Chinese history. As I said in my opening remarks, the Education Bureau shares the same goal um, and vision with members, and we have been um, enhancing the Chinese history elements, be it the uh, general studies uh, subject in primary school, citizenship and social development, geography, uh, physical education and art. We can find rich elements of Chinese history. We also collaborate with different organizations, professional groups in organizing uh, activities and competitions. And we also cover the other learning experiences in the curriculum in primary and secondary level to cultivate students' interest uh, in taking up Chinese history at a later stage. However, I must emphasize that students should take the subject on the basis of their aspiration and ability in order to nurture a new generation of talents. Many con members are concerned that the curriculum, as they put 30 years um, since uh, it was first designed, in fact, according to the Senior Secondary cur uh, Education Curriculum Guide and the MRE, since its implementation, the uh, Education Bureau has been um, adopting this approach of organic integration and uh, coordinated connection, etc., so as to uh, make it an enjoyable experience for chi uh, Chinese history students. In fact, starting secondary one, the revised Chinese history curriculum uh, has become a more uh, has become more focused, so as to release less in time. A stronger emphasis is also placed on Chinese culture and the relationship with Hong Kong so that students have a better idea of Hong Kong's relationship with mainland China. We also deploy um, technology uh, by arranging visits. We also organize uh, activities, visits, and competitions to cultivate students' interest in learning Chinese history. This is in line with members' suggestions of um, making the teaching and learning of Chinese history fun and enjoyable. We'll continue to collaborate with the Council so that uh, it will make it uh, a more enjoyable experience for Chinese history students to enhance their knowledge in Chinese history, geography, and culture, and instill in them a sense of Ch national identity. Some members are concerned whether we have sufficient content relating to the history of uh, the Chinese Communist Party. In fact, uh, the curriculum covers the 
the modern history of China, which includes contribution made by the CCP to the development of our country. For example, their participation in the uh, anti-Japanese aggression uh, war and the Education Bureau also make other arrangements. For example, in the mainland uh, exchange tours to include more elements on the modern Chinese history and the history of the Chinese Communist Party. The Education Bureau will continue to develop teaching resources in a diversified manner. For example, we have a teaching and learning uh, kit at junior secondary level for Chinese history. And we also have uh, teaching materials relating to the three warring states um, and other teaching materials uh, for ch traditional Chinese culture so that a dynamic and coordinated approach can be taken for teachers to cultivate in students' uh, interest in Chinese culture and history. Now, members also talked about uh, using museums, historical figures, uh, to enrich the content of Chinese history, extracurricular activities. Uh, this is also in line with the Bureau's vision. We do encourage teachers to make use of museums and other resources. For example, we also collaborate with um, museums in preparing a teaching aid with practical tips for teachers. We also work with Sun Yat-sen Memorial um, Museum with games for an immersive learning for students. This is welcomed by teachers uh, so that um, we enrich the content of Chinese history and by uh, organizing activities. And for four consecutive years, we also organize the e-learning or uh, e-reading program for junior secondary students. And this program is very popular. Now, in fact, the Education Bureau attaches great importance to the professional development of teachers and Chinese history subject teachers. Are, uh, most of these teachers studied Chinese history in universities. So they are more than qualified. And many teachers also received a similar uh, teacher training. And the Education Bureau also collaborates with tertiary institutions to organize diversified programs and activities to cater for the needs of t teachers. From 2020-2021 to now, the Education Bureau has organized close to 130 professional uh, training activities for serving teachers and over 60,000 teachers have participated, and the program has been well received. In order to achieve the learning goals, we'll continue to provide more diversified training programs for teachers. On top of that, the Education Bureau has continued to enhance collaboration with accrediting agencies and uh, NGOs, and we also have professional partners such as the Department of History in CUHK, uh, Department of History in Baptist University, Hong Kong, and also History Research Division of Lingnan University, uh, Xi'an University, and also Chinese History Institutes and uh, Conservancy Association, and also uh, the Hong Kong Society of History, so on and so forth. Through organizing different professional teacher training activities and and, te and activities for students, we create the atmosphere uh, that is favorable uh, to learning Chinese history. And after resumption of normal travel with the mainland, we'll organize tours and activities to enhance the efficiency of mainland visits. Many members talked about mainland visits, which are conducive to helping students learn more about our country. Unfortunately, in the past three years, Many such mainland tours um, were put on hold, and therefore, in Hong Kong Science Museum and also the uh, Hong Kong Heritage Office and Coastal Defense Museum in Hong Kong, we arranged visits and training activities for teachers. We also arranged visits to Ho Sao Hung and Tai Po, uh, Long Yuk Tao. With 
the epidemic easing this year. We have also organized another uh, activity with in collaboration with the City University for Teacher and also for uh, Sun Yat Sen Memorial Museum, Hong Kong Coastal Defense Museum. And other visits and training activities for teachers will be organized in the latter half of 2023. As for um, mainland exchange tours and visits for students, all along it has been the focus of Education Bureau's work. We have been subsidizing schools in um, arranging for visits and programs covering some 30 uh, provinces, uh, autonomous regions and cities. We've also continued to uh, develop new student exchange programs. With a full resumption of travel with the mainland starting April this year, the Education Bureau uh, will arrange for citizenship and social development students to go on mainland tours and will gradually resume um, exchange tours uh, for primary and junior secondary students. We'll also subsidize schools. Uh, which uh, will arrange on their own mainland visits to enhance students' understanding of our country's history, geography, and culture. Finally, some members suggested that um, the elements of Chinese history, culture, and geography should be subsumed under citizenship, social development, but this will have implications on um, teaching and learning resources, the number of teachers, teacher quality, etc. We need to uh, carefully consider this option. We take the lead by professionals uh, principle. When time is ripe, the proposal is submitted to the relevant C Curriculum Development Council and other committees for consideration. And the del deliberations will take place under the stringent mechanism. We're still in the process of reforming the curricula. And hence, the proposal should only be considered after the review has been completed. Uh, Mr. President, we thank Professor Lau and um, Reverend Kuhn's motion and amendments, respectively. I think they share the same goal, that is, uh, t they want our young people to know about more about their country's history, culture, and geography. As I said at the outset, um, the importance uh, is beyond question, and we also share the same strong sense of mission in achieving this goal. But because of the factors I cited, we are not going to take forward the um, request in this motion, as we cannot gauge the implications brought about by another compulsory subject at senior secondary level. Our priority is to ensure smooth implementation of the optimizing measures so that lesson time can be re released to make um, senior secondary learning more flexible. The op we need to create a stable environment to further stabilize um, the teaching and learning of the new subjects, citizenship, and social development. I urge members to understand why we're not making Chinese history a compulsory subject at the senior secondary level. This is also in line with the actual circumstances and expectation of the education sector. In the future, we we'll strive to promote Chinese history education through a systematic and diversified strategy. When circumstances permit, we will um, create more opportunities for senior students to further the knowledge in national history and culture. We will also continue to review the curriculum and maintain liaison with the sector to promote and deepen Chinese history education. We will also um, optimize classroom training and live learn live wide learning activities to enrich students' core learning experiences so that students can have a more comprehensive and in-depth knowledge in the country's history, geography, and culture. They explore the changes in different facets of our country as well as the interplay between humanity, geography, and history. After implementing the optimizing measures at senior secondary level, the Education Bureau is delighted to see that schools are able to release lesson time and create more favorable uh, conditions to organize Chinese history enhancement lessons or activities to further enrich a student's learning experience. Developing and promoting Chinese history education is a great responsibility and a common goal we share with members here. The Education Bureau will remain steadfast in taking forward national education, including history, geography, and culture so that we can have our children fasten the button um, to, to we can provide quality education to our children. I hope you will join hands with us in nurturing a new generation of patriots. Thank you. Well, you enjoyed. I now call upon Reverend Canon Peter Kuhn to move an amendment. President, I move my amendment. I propose the question to you that Reverend 
Canon Peter Kuhn's amendment be passed. Those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Professor Lao Ji Pang, you still have one minute and 49 seconds to reply, then the debate will come to a close. Professor Lao. President, today and yesterday, many members have told many stories. Now, here's one. Now, in 1949, the PRC was established. In less than one year time, it faced aggressions from foreign powers. In 1950, in June, the United States took a trip from the League of Nations to launch an attack on the Korea Peninsula. And then the CCP led a fight against the U.S. together with um, the Korean Army. Despite the strong enemy, the People's Volunteer Army drove the opposite, drove the enemies back to the south of the 38th degree latitude. Now, without um, patriots, the country may be attacked again. So the Chinese uh, state leaders made a decision to develop um, nuclear power as well as satellites. It was said that. At one point, uh, President Truman considered using nuclear, launching a nuclear attack to Chinese soil to secure a victory. Now, after the war, the country was in shambles. Many, uh, many experts and scholars have said that. We should give up on developing nuclear power because uh, we didn't have the power, the power to do so. But see where we are now. Thank you. Now I put the question to you. The um, Professor Lau's uh, motion, as amended by Reverend Peter Kuhn, be passed. With those in favour, please raise their hands. Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. The council now adjourn. The Council will resume at 11 a.m. on Wednesday, 22nd of February 2023.